Hey guys, it's Multiplier. We're with Plugin Boutique looking at Sonic Faction's synth sequencer as a Max for Life device to work with the Ableton Push and how we can use this to generate ideas and maybe even use it in a live context. It's a great way of laying down ideas. It's a little bit different to how you would normally write in Ableton. And it's worth noting at this stage that I'm using the Max for Live devices and the Ableton Push, but there's lots of other versions available as well. We see there's the APC40 mapping, the launch pad mapping, and there's also contact instruments and a version for machine as well. It's all part of the archetype bundle that comes with some other instruments. But let's dive into the synth sequencer. Now, because this is a synth sequencer, it's not generating any sound by itself. Instead, it's generating MIDI notes. It's almost like a MIDI effect. So we need to put this through an instrument. So I've chosen the initial preset in Hatchet, which is one of the instruments as part of the, of the archetype bundle from Sonic Faction. And when you first load up this synth sequencer, the first thing you want to do is press one of the notes on the push to see what happens. And very quickly, you get a feel for what this synth sequencing actually looks like. You need to hit play to actually play it through. And then what we can do, we can actually change the scale that these notes are coming out at. So we can change the root note from say C to maybe let's try G or another one. I like D sharp. But when we change the root note, we may find that we want to change the actual octave of one of these notes. So to do that, we hit the octave tab. And then we can see for each one of these notes, we can choose which octave to basically play that note at. And it's worth noting at this stage that we can change the speed at which we move through these steps. And we can change that speed by changing one of these four buttons on the right hand side. So notice what happens as I press them. Pretty cool, right? The length tab is also quite fun. So if we hit the length tab, we can see there's a few colors here. And the way the colors work is these three rows at the top basically say how long each note is for that particular MIDI note that's being triggered. So the top row is going to be the longest note, and then the middle row is going to be the notes a bit shorter, and then the row below is going to be the notes even shorter than that. So I'll give you some examples. We can always go back and change any notes at any stage we like. So we can maybe hop back into note mode, maybe the octave. It can be really fun if you do this live, you can keep changing the patterns as you go.
And then the row of blue buttons along the bottom light up pink when you press them. And what that does is it essentially glides. So let's say we trigger the first note, then it will glide. If we trigger the first note there, it will glide from that first note through to the next note. I'll give you some examples. gliding from the first note. So if we want to glide from this note to this note, we need to take a note of where it is. See how it's gliding now because we triggered that. If we want to take this step sequencing one step further and actually step sequence our own modulations on whatever we want, we can do that with the sequence and modulation control. So to do that, first of all, we need to, for the instrument we're working with, we need to map what we want to modulate to one of the macro controls. So in the case of this preset in Hatchet, the initial preset from the Sonic Faction instrument, if I wanted to modulate, say, the pulse width, which I can do with this parameter here, I can right click map to macro one, and now it's mapped to this macro here. I then hit learn, I then move the control, and now when we hop into the seg mod tab, or the sequence modulation tab, and we can basically program in a, a modulation for that control. I'll show you how it works. Notice the pulse width changing. And you may have noticed that that was changing in a very jumpy way. And we can glide between those different amounts if we want to smooth the modulation. So to do that, we hit glide. And notice when I hit glide that the pulse width will be modulated in a smooth way instead of a jumpy, discreet way. It's pretty cool. Check it out. One final button that's an awful lot of fun to play around with is the random button. And 
literally as simple as it sounds when you hold it it randomizes things so it works especially well when you're recording you playing or especially in a live situation that's when the random button can be especially useful if you want to do say let's say you've got a long eight bar section repeating say a bar or two at a time you can press the random button in the final half a bar or the final bar and it adds a feel of variation in there almost like a drummer would add a drum feel or you can just press it to see what sort of weird and wonderful things can happen it's a lot of fun let's show you how it works notice when i'm pressing random you can see the sequence jumping about so at the moment it moves smoothly through And there you go, that is the synth sequencer from Sonic Faction. I've been Multiplier, hope you enjoyed.